big exciting day for me today. I'm come down to Portsmouth for my first ever British rum distillery tour. This is the kind of little distillery behind me. We've actually, uh, just behind the camera there, we've actually got their offices and, uh, and we've also got aging rooms, the other side of, this is Fort Cumberland. Uh, hopefully get a bit of footage around there, but the aging rooms are all the way over the back there as well. This distillery already has blown my mind of the, the kind of the size that they, you know, they're at, at the moment and they still cast themselves as small fry. So, so let's dive in and let's sort of give you a guided tour of the place. When was the distillery started? When did you launch? Uh, we, uh, we moved into this facility in uh, January 2018, so five years. Five, five years. years. Wow. Yeah. And you've got four rums we're four going to be rums. talking about a little bit today. Uh, so we've got, we start off with the 1968, mm -hmm. the base. We've got the, uh, the cinnabar, the spiced. Uh, the 1812 and then the forum that was kind of newish to me I hadn't realized yet which is it's our botanical rum our botanical so, yeah, rum yeah, it's, it's, our, it's, their, it's, it's their rum our, and tonic rum this is our, yeah that's our crossover our so, get gin drinkers into rum rum I wanted to make a rum which was very drinkable straight off the still so on age 1968 um, 1968 is uh, dare I say it it's an unaged rum but it's also sippable you can drink this on the rocks it's very pleasant it has a very soft smooth sweet upfront profile with a big fat unctuous underbelly of tropical fruit and then a little nod to agricole on the back of the palate agricole ooh scary in the UK uh, mm -hmm. it isn't an agricole it isn't a sugar cane juice rum it's a syrup rum our 1812 our three-year-old that is just 1968 put in a cask at 68 percent left for three years and it produces wow. this fantastic stuff bottled at ABV uh, it's 43%. 43. Yeah. Very quickly, ex explain the numbers. 1968 is... 1968 is the year that uh, the co-founders, myself and Giles, were born. Born. So we thought if we were going to go right back to the start of us, let's go back right to the start. Yeah. We were born in 68, let's call it that. 1812 is... That's when the fort that we're in, um, which is uh, our logo, which is that shape, uh, that's Fort Cumberland. Um, 19, uh, 1812 is when the fort was finished being built. And give me the quick story of, of Cinnabar as well, because I don't think we got this on camera. Cinnabar, um, the, na the name? Yeah. Cinnabar, my, my son, uh, my youngest son, uh, we were in the early days putting the distillery together, and he noticed a little what he thought was a butterfly fluttering around, a uh, little uh, red and black butterfly. It wasn't a butterfly, it's the Cinnabar moth. He looked it up, and he said, oh, Dad, it's called a Cinnabar. That'd be a great name for a spice rum, wouldn't it? And I said, yep, so banked it, and, and here it is. And actually, on the back of the label, Morris, as we call him, is on there, the little Cinnabar moth. Because um, one of our things is we have all of our Yeah, I hadn't products. noticed that before. All of our products have a back label That's picture. Amazing. And then the name behind Forum. 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 Forum is uh, slightly, I suppose, a bit poncy in terms of cleverness. Um, we're in the fort. Our, our, our lead selling gin is Fort Gin. Um, we're in Fort Cumberland. Uh, rum, Fort uh, Rum. Oh, that and, went straight over my head. But, but also, but, but there's, there's a slight <laughs> extra twist to that, as I said, <laughs> trying to be a little bit too clever. Forum was made, um, invented, to take the gin drinker that professes to hate rum into the world of rum, okay? So the word forum, talks, that's a discussion area, isn't it? You have a forum and you discuss within the forum. So this is supposed to be, deliberately supposed to be a little bit um, different and force discussion about rum. If you are in my membership community, I will be dropping the full 45 minute vlog of this distillery tour. That'll be coming later this week. So do keep an eye out for that. A bit more information is uh, held in there. The only other thing I will say is just, I forgot to give Vince his uh, microphone for the first couple of minutes inside, this, inside the distillery. Uh, so it is a little bit echoey, but just bear with it. I sort it out very quickly. So, so the whole process, we've got fermentation tanks over there. Yeah. So, so what we do is we get in our, um, our dehydrated sugarcane juice from Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, we put it into this big fella here, which is a brew kettle. Okay. So it's oil, um, oil jacket. This is a jacket. Same as the still. There are four immersion heaters in there. Heat the oil up and then heat the content of the of the kettle. So we put water um, and our dehydrated sugarcane juice, and that rehydrates, which effectively is turns straight back into sugarcane juice. And we've made agricole from it, it makes a very nice agricole actually. But by boiling it, what we do is we change the molecular structure of, that, of the juice into a syrup. So we boil it just enough to change it into a syrup. 
but not so much as to completely eradicate all those lovely flavours you get in an agricole, so the earthy, floral, herbal flavours. Talk, talk us through the syrup. Let's get this on camera. So your dehydrated sugar cane juice yes. is exactly that. It's yes, exactly that. It's made in Costa Rica by a company, a Swiss owned company, that have been there for 50, 60 years now. Um, and they have, they have several plantations that sort of sell into them, yeah. if you like, a little bit like the wine trade. Um, and they have a, a, a processing unit in the middle. It basically takes the cane juice, juices it immediately after harvest. They put it in these huge vats, big open air vats, and it's heated at a very, very low heat, very low um, intensity, which literally just evaporates all the moisture. And at the end of the process, you've got this sandy, grainy, raw sugarcane juice, yeah. as in it's dry, um, dehydrated. And that's, that's the process. That's all they do. There's no other process to it. They scoop it up, put it in bags, ship it over. It goes over to um, Holland. We draw it down from Holland when we require it. And literally, as I say, we, we, we rehydrate it. It becomes effectively um, sugarcane juice again. And then we, we then, I decided to make, a, I didn't want to make an agricole because nobody in the UK really understands agricole. I wanted to make a syrup based rum because I love those Northern, yeah. uh, South America, Central American syrup rums. Because I just, you get the best, best of both worlds. Because you've got so much molasses in there because it's not been processed out. But it doesn't come to the front because you're not making it from molasses. What comes to the front is the lovely sweetness, the delicacy, the, the you know the, the green apples, the lovely soft juiciness of, of the sugarcane juice. And then in the back, in the depth, you've got the molasses sitting there. Now that molasses comes to the fore much more when it's aged. In the unaged, it sits there in the depth of the of the flavour, but not so prevalent as when you start to age it. So when you put it in, a little bit like, again, like the South American rums that have been aged or whatever, I know a lot of those are, um, you know, altitude and all the rest of it, and, and they're Solera, so it's not all the same age. But the aged rums are heavy with molasses, but they haven't been made with molasses. So our process is sort of two or three different processes thrown together, if you like, at once, um, to make the rum that we make. So, so you've rehydrated, you've got your wash, is that the right term? We've got the wash, you've fermented, you've got that, and then it goes into that for the wash run. That's right, so, so we make what we call it, whether it's the right term or not, um, apologies, we call, <laughs> it, we call it sugar wine. Sugar wine. So, so it's been in the fermenters for two weeks. We ferment for two weeks um, deliberately, uh, and, and the reason we do that, I, I tried it at different intervals, but two weeks gives the maximum yield. So we end up, especially in the summer months, we can get a sugar wine somewhere close to 16% by volume. So it's really strong alcohol. We then put 500 litres of that into Sophie, our 500 Sophie litre Woo. Pot. Sophie Woo. Our 500 litre pot still, which again is a jacket, oil jacket process. So immersion heaters, this is a jacket of oil, heats up and then heats the content of the still. And we do what we call the wash run. The wash run is where you take off all the alcohol. So there are no cuts at this point, you just, everything that comes off, you take until you get down to sort of 20% ABV, because then it becomes, it's not economically viable to keep going. In a 500 litre run, that'll give us about 130 litres of wash, at about 45 to 48% by volume. So again, quite high strength. So when you go for the second distillation with a spirit run, you've already got quite a high strength alcohol, yeah. which of course condenses and then becomes higher. And you end up with, um, 76 to 78 percent by volume um, spirit, which is a really good spirit. So heads, hearts, and tails. So this is uh, what would you call it? A hybrid still? Because that's obviously the pot. Yeah, no, You've it's got... not quite a hybrid. And let me explain how we use yeah, it. Because on. because yeah, this is a pot. We are a single still pot still yeah. um, outfit. We do. This is a gin basket. Forget about that. We're not doing <laughs> <that> gin. <laughs> this this is a four plate column still. Now a four plate column still is more for flavouring the gins if we want to use it for flavouring the gins. We use this in the rum process, but only a fraction of the time. What happens when we get down to, you know, the cut point, the 20%, when it's not economically viable to keep going, as I mentioned before, we then switch it through the column. And the reason for switching it through the column is, and I, it's very, very um, agricultural, it's like wringing the cloth out, literally. Because when I do that, 
because of the process of column still and how column still works over a pot still, the volume will shoot straight back up to 70, 80 percent and we'll get another 10, 15 litres of high strength alcohol. Wow. And that, when you're talking about, you know, production at our, our level, that's another 20 bottles. It's worth doing. So the only reason in, in the rum production that we use this is to squeeze the cloth. So it's not quite a hybrid. It's there to give me a little bit left, you know, a little bit extra at the end of the run. And that's the condenser, which is a big tube full of water. Copper coil in there, which is where the condensation happens. Yes. That's what it runs out of Paris Beak. So the whole, the whole process, uh, we tend to do, we tend to make the syrup on a Friday. Yeah. We've only done that because until recently we haven't been able to use both the still and, and the kettle at the same time we can because of the power, the draw and power right. we can now. Uh, on a Friday, we'll make the syrup and we put it into the fermenters, we inoculate with the yeast. And then the following Monday, two weeks on, is when we then start the wash for that batch. So it'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, wash, Thursday, spirit. So if you add it all together, four weeks, uh, three, well, uh, three and a half weeks, three and a half weeks to produce unaged rum. And that's a batch of how many litres, roughly, give or take? Uh, if you just do a straight spirit run at the end of that week, about 180 to 200 litres wow. of spirit. And so enough for a cask, yeah. more than enough for a cask, and certainly enough for um, a good batch of 1968. Now, of course, what we can do instead, and we often do when we need to make cinnabar, cinnabar our spice rum, we take our wash, 500 litres, we steep for 24 hours our spice mix, and then we run through the still. So, so the spices are steeped in, <coughs> steeped in, in wow. here, and then and then the twenty four hour steep gives it greater depth of flavour, and then we run it through the still for the rectification. So basically, we're then doing like we've done with the sixty eight, our second distillation of the rum, but at the same time we're throwing flavour in there, like we do with the gin. So you end up with a white spiced rum, uh, which is lovely. It's it's nice enough on its own, but of course everyone likes a little tinge of sweetness with the spice. So what we do is we take the same syrup we used to make the rum in the first place which is a dark brown colour, and we sweeten it, 20, uh, sorry, 2% by volume, that's all, nothing really, 4 litres to 200 litres of, of spirit. And it's just enough to give it a bit of colour and just enough to give it that little sweetness um, which finishes the whole. So, so, so cinnabar spice rum is lovely because it's unaged, it's clean, it's crisp, it's clean on the palate with a real sweetness up front and a <coughs> burst of spice on the palate and a lovely warm cuddle as it goes down. It's a really good drink. We've also one other rum uh, that we make here, another unaged rum, which is our forum, which is our botanical rum. Uh, we made this for the gin drinker to take them from gin to rum. So we put five botanicals steeped for 24 hours, run through on a sp spirit run, heads, hearts, tails, hearts, we then stick in a bottle as forum once we've let it down to 41%. Slightly different in profile to 1968 because it's got those five botanicals in. Orange peel, elderflower, lime peel, coriander and... Gross. Gorse flower. Yeah. So they're the five that are in it. I haven't made one for a while, sorry. <laughs> they're the five. And the gorse flower gives a little bit of coconut in the back note. Elderflower, a little back, back note of sweetness. Orange peel, right to the front again, sweetness. Um, so it changes the profile of 1968. He's still very obviously a rum when you try it neat. But when you put tonic in it, this is the trick. Tonic, drinking it with tonic water, Initially, it tastes like a gin and tonic, which is why the gin people like it. And it finishes like a rum and tonic, which is why the rum people like it. So it's a double in one. And it's lovely. We often have people here saying they hate rum, gin drinkers. They'll have a forum and tonic. They go, oh, I like that. And you say, well, you said you didn't like rum. Make your mind up. Um, and that's why it's there. It's a great drink, especially in the summer. Really good. How big is one of those casks? It's a 200 litre. 200 litre cask. Ex bourbon. Um, we've been using Jim Beam, but only because uh, that's what I started with. It does make a difference. Um, and Jim Beam being a light bourbon, I didn't, want them to, I didn't want the bourbon and the rum to fight. I wanted them to marry and sit together comfortably, which it does very well. So this one laid down in March 18. So we're, we're tumbling towards four years that you're about to try. So you're very lucky, Steve, because not many people get to do this. So we take the stopper out and let's have a little delve in there, see what we can find. So this is the same rum that is our 1812, but obviously it's a little bit older now because it's 
as I said, nearly four years old now as opposed to three. Um, we, we keep this cask as our, as our tester, if you like, so that we can check on the profile, see where we're going. So the important thing for this will be, when we've gone past the five year, which is gonna come out in 24, we'll then make a decision on seven or eight, which is why we keep this. This is insane smell. Mm -hmm. So it's cask strength. So this will be about 64% at the moment. Wow. It's like a banana -y. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. I tell you, it's getting much better. Intensity of flavour, as you would expect from the aging process. We're now getting a lot more, you know, a lot more of the, 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 the stronger flavours of rum coming through. And the bourbon influence is dropping off, yeah. which, is, which is what you feel as you go through. And I guess when we get to the five year, even more so. So what we would hope to see in another year's time is a bit more sweetness, a bit more intensity of flavour and colour. And pretty much no bourbon influence at all. Wow. So Nothing. it's exciting because I've never done this before. And, and it's, it's great to see it as, it as it churns through, you know, as it changes. This is all new to me. We're, we're, we're off to the ageing right. room. We're off to one of our ageing rooms, yeah, for the, where the casks are. So this, we're now going into Fort Cumberland. God. The ones in the middle are waiting for the next aging room uh, for us to build the racking so we can put them in. They won't be here all the time. So, so how many barrels have we got in here? Uh, Give or take. 76, I think. 76, 200 yeah. litre barrels. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But let's just talk temperature because this is the big thing I see a lot in YouTube comments and stuff like this. The, we can't age rum in the UK because it's not as hot, the climate's, you yeah. know, all the. This is quite mild. Yeah, um, the, 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 uh, anyone saying you can't age rum in the UK because of the temperate climate, um, unfortunately, uh, is incorrect. Um, <laughs> and I say that because we age uh, whiskey in Scotland, and the last time I went to Scotland, it was significantly colder <laughs> than here. Um, of course you can age spirit. What you can't do is age it as quickly or as um, intensely as you can in the tropics, because you don't get the range of humidity and you don't get the range of heat like you do in the tropics. The heat obviously causing the evaporation and the transpiration and then therefore the drawing and the angel's share and therefore the greater intensity of concentration of flavour which is what you get in the tropics. You do of course get that in the UK but you get it about three times slower. That's just a fact, and it's a fact of the temperature and the humidity and everything else. You can certainly age it. We have. Our three-year-old is a clearly aged rum, and, and, and we've just tried some which is now four years old, and that's clearly aged. So you can do it. It's just not at the same level, which is why it's so exciting and so different, because it's different to the stuff that's aged in the tropics. What are you guessing the rough temperature in here is? I'd go sort of <coughs> 10, 11? Yeah, it ranges between 8 and 12 all year 12. round. Wow. So that's the range. So, so it doesn't have a huge temperature range, which again, that's a blight on the aging process. If it had a bigger range, it would be potentially better, i.e. if it got much, much hotter and um, you know, a little bit cooler and the range was bigger, that helps with the colouring and everything else of, of this spirit within the cask. But it is the way it is. We're in a casemate, which is a vaulted ceiling uh, building with about eight to 10 feet of uh, earth on top. So it insulates perfectly well. And, and it's a great place to age. It really is. And what about the, the angel share? Do you, do you get how much? Um, we've worked it out to be no more than between three and 4% in the three years. Oh, wow. So not even a year. No, wow. no, no, because we, uh, um, it's very, very low, very low. In fact, yeah, no, about, yeah, it's, it's about two a year. So when you come aggregate, it's about six in the end. So it's not, uh, it's, it's not a high uh, angel share at all. 
couldn't get any footage in there because it's pitch black, but um, that building behind me is about four or five times the size of what we've just been into there. Um, give it a, a year, a couple of years or so, they'll be big enough to hold 250 barrels. 250 barrels in there. And Vince has just told me that he's going to put, um, uh, by the time the, the cast club that they've got going on, you're going to be able to have fine dining right in the middle down there as well when all this is sorted. So, so exciting to see what UK British rums are doing. That, that's just mental in there from, wasn't expecting any of this. So I just want to say a massive thank you to Vince for inviting me down, for spending all that time with me, uh, giving me the tour, talking me, giving me all the, the sort of minute details of what's going on down there. Such a brilliant day, such brilliant chats. I cannot wait to see if even some of those plans that you're talking about uh, come to fruition because they will be amazing if any of that happens. But right now, I'm diving in to film these as two separate videos i cannot wait to start tasting these so check out this will be dropping next week if you're watching this live on this channel uh, and these will be dropping very soon on my extra channel